Hey folks, Chris here, and just want to get a little helpful tip out there to anybody who's planning on doing any gardening this spring, uh, making any soil amendments to planter beds or any of that kind of stuff where they're, you know, potentially putting down straw or animal manure or any of those kind of things or wanting to grow stuff. Uh, just a helpful tip from farmers is I think it'd probably be important to know your grower on the type of compost that you're getting or the type of straw that you're using, asking them if there was anything sprayed on that field. And if they could tell you, if they made the straw, they should be able to tell you whether they sprayed anything on it. And if any of those chemicals that they sprayed on it potentially has any residual to them. So some common ones that uh, can get sprayed on say wheat, barley, stubble, those kind of crops, you know, when they're growing the crop, the wheat crop or the barley, barley crop, one of them that um, you know, a common name of the chemical is curtail. Um, the name of the chemical that you're concerned about in that uh, chemistry is chlorpyrrolid. And chlorpyrrolids work very well at controlling Canadian thistles and other broadleaf weeds in those crops. Where it's a point of concern is that that chlorpyrrolid has a potential for a strong carryover. It has what we call a residual. And that residual will also make it into the wheat plant and effectively die with that plant and can be in the stubble. Another one um, that's not so much used in, you know, wheat crops, barley crops, that kind of thing. But if you're, you know, say getting steer manure from a friend and, and he, you know, cut his own hay and, and fed his animals is an amino pyrrolid, especially in grass fields, not so much alfalfa, but people that are fed, you know, animals that are fed strictly grass. These amino pyrrolids are very effective at controlling broadleaf weeds, specifically like knapweed and you know again canadian thistle these what are deemed noxious weeds in our area in people's um, pastures and rangelands that amino pyrrolid a common name for that chemical is milestone uh, and, and that's commonly used because it's a really low use rate and i'm pretty sure it's not a restricted use pesticide but it has a three to five year residual when it's put on at the higher rates in these pastures and so in that amino pyrrolid, same thing will go in the soil. It will stop new weeds from growing. It'll let the grass grow. It'll make the field look beautiful. Um, but it, the same thing, it has that res potential residual carryover and that amino pyrrolid can make it not only into the grass, but all the way through the animal. It's actually, you know, labeled very safe for animals. One where you're not really concerned with it. Say you have a animal operation and you're having babies on your operation. That's one of the ones that's more safe for that compared to like, Picloram, which the common chemical name for that would have been Tordon. So these are just some concerns that I think that you should know, you know, if you're putting all this work into your garden, I think it's really frustrating to put all this work into your garden. You fertilize it, you know, you buy this straw or whatever, and you're making these amendments to your operation and you go to grow plants and they just don't grow as good as you should. And this is one of those instances where I think that, you know, an operation that is, you know, buying hay, certified organic or they can certify as organic i mean there's a lot of people with animals that they're buying their hay you know from a farmer and those people don't have you know any documentation that says what was sprayed on that field yet they fed it to their animals now they got a pile of manure out back and you say hey I'm, you know my neighbor's got a pile of manure i'll go get that pile of manure you don't know and so uh, one of the other things you can do you know in your greenhouse or whatever early this spring is you know get some of it try growing your plants in it your legumes like peas, those kind of crops, those are going to be your most susceptible to those types of herbicides. So that, that that potential carryover, any of your legumes are going to be really sensitive to those types of chemistries. And so, you know, if you want to test those in it and, and everything looks great, you're looking for leaf curling, you're looking for spotting, just general deformities in the plant, uh, or just it not even growing. Um, and yeah, those, those can be issues. So one other thing too with hay crops uh alfalfa particularly uh in our area i know that people are growing gmo alfalfa there there are gmo alfalfa varieties out there and that is a that gmo variety of alfalfa i'm not so concerned about the alfalfa being a gmo variety it's it's what it gets sprayed with that gmo variety allows them to be able to spray glyphosate over top of the alfalfa and it's really used more, um, you know, getting the stand established. They're not really probably using the glyphosate anywhere close to harvest time on the alfalfa. 
is there potential for that chemistry to carry over and you know be in the the hay and you know possibly the river possibly you know i'm not saying it's not but you know it's it if that is a concern of yours it might be worth asking your grower hey you know what type of alfalfa are you growing gmo alfalfa and the grower should know if it's gmo alfalfa or not just those kind of general concerns about that there is a lot of gmo alfalfa in our area grow just because it's it's easy to manage it's hard to to spray weeds in alfalfa again because it's a legume they made that gmo right available and lets them have these just you know really beautiful looking alfalfa fields and so um next time maybe think about that when you're saying you know how beautiful that alfalfa field looks um, it, it could just be a GMO variety out there, right? And so, again, I'm not saying that's good or bad. It's just I know that there's people that have those concerns, and I figured that that was worth mentioning on there as well. So, anyways, want to get a message out to the, the people that are gardening and stuff. Just a little tip from a farmer, a farmer's perspective on that. Um, you know, know your supplier, know your grower, and your grower should know what they were doing on their operation, what they put into it, uh, so that you have the you know most bountiful harvest you can have in your garden so anyways hope everyone's doing great and until next time thanks for watching